Pep Guardiola. Es Pep Guardiola is a genius on and off the field. Dentro del campo como fuera del campo. Pepe es un jugador de unas características. Pepe es un jugador con especial características, pero no solo por su juego, sino por su visión y su control. Es un juego de visión, es un juego de control. Es un jugador con un extraordinario natural talento, con una visión del juego, no siempre la única. Es un jugador natural. Pep Guardiola's genius on the football pitch isn't limited to an aptitude for scoring, passing and defending. His true value stems from an ability to control the game, create a rhythm, and lead his team in the direction they need to go in order to be successful. Pep Guardiola is the conductor, and for his entire career, Barcelona has been his orchestra. Pep grew up in Sant Pedor, a town located in the central part of Catalonia. The town is fabled for the acts of a young shepherd, who, as legend has it, armed with a drum, turned back Napoleon's troops during the Spanish War of Independence. Armed with only a football, Pep Guardiola has played the town's role of giant killer in recent years, taking on many of the world's greatest players and coming out victorious time and time again. Pep was born on the 18th of January 1971 at the Sant Josep Clinic in the neighboring city of Manresa. He was the third child, but the first boy of Valentin and Dolores Guardiola, and as such was the center of attention for the first five years of his life until his younger brother Pere was born. Pep's love for football dates back as far as his parents can remember. Es que cuando estaba en la cuna, él es el tercer de los hijos. He's my third child. When he was little, he had the same crib as his older sisters. He used to kick it with his feet until it broke, so we had to buy a new one. We knew he was going to be a good football player because he never stopped. Y siempre lo decíamos, ese chico va a ser futbolista porque con las piernas no para. Ya nació con la la pelota los pies porque ya he was born with a ball on his feet. If you wanted to keep him happy as a kid, you only had to give him a ball. Our neighbor sometimes got a little irritated because he used to play on the square and he would always be making noise and he would be hitting at the doors with the ball. Pep was a fairly well-rounded child. He liked his studies, and enjoyed playing with the neighborhood children. But it was football that occupied his mind nearly every waking hour, and every chance he had, Pep would take to the pitch to practice or play. We spent hours playing in the street. I was the goalie, and he tried to score all the time. We never got tired. Early in the morning, we could hear the ball bouncing, and we said, oh, Pep is already playing. I either went out and played, or he came to get me. Sometimes he had to wake me up. At a young age, Guardiola had learned how to manage his time well. He was attentive during class and was quick in getting his homework done so that he could have plenty of time to focus energies on his passion. He was a nervous kid, but he paid attention in class. Whenever the bell rang, he stood up immediately. He picked up his ball and hurried out to play. I have always been very responsible, and I always knew what I had to do. I wanted to play football, but I knew that I had to study at that age, you really have time to do everything if you want to do it. But even as he studied, Pep knew that football was his true calling. He was happy playing with his friends in the town square, but longed to join the other children down at the San Pedro field, because he knew that given the chance, he would show them that he was as good as, or better than anyone else on the pitch. Once, the kids from the town organized a match with other kids from a neighbor town. When they were ready to start, they realized that they were only eight and the other team had nine kids. So they saw Pep playing around with the ball and invited him to join them. 
They started the game, and what was funny is that after the first half, the other team said that they weren't going to continue playing because they didn't want Pep to play anymore. He had already scored five or six goals. They got so angry that Pep had to stay on the bench during the rest of the match. Pep's reputation was beginning to grow, and soon he was offered the chance to try out for the junior level sides at Barcelona. Though he was good enough to make the team, the travel back and forth proved to be grueling. And his parents decided to arrange for him to play locally for Gimnastique de Manresa. Pep credits this decision for much of his development as a footballer. I met my first two coaches, Marsol, who passed away a couple of years ago, and Casado. Both of them were key parts in my development as a footballer. I compare football with studies. In both of them, you need to have teachers to learn. Pep's skill level continued to improve, and his devotion to the game grew deeper. Even at a young age, his coaches and friends knew he was a very special talent, with the football world at his fingertips. Fernand Val, who to this day is one of Pep's closest friends, recognized his talent even before the coaches at Barcelona did. On 1982 or 1983, we went to play to Barcelona versus Barça, and we beat them 2-0. Pep was the hero, and from then on, they started to follow him. Two weeks later, he called me home and told me that he had been called to try out for Barça. He was there for a week, and they enrolled him immediately. Pep's mastery of the football was developed to a large extent by his small stature. He wasn't big or strong enough to get physical with children his age, so he had to depend on keeping his wits about him. He relied on speed of thought and the ability to direct the ball to the exact place that it needed to be. Guardiola began playing for one of Barcelona's nursery squads in 1984. The coaches were all impressed by his ability, but they wanted him to grow and become stronger. So they convinced his parents to enroll him in La Masia, a football boarding school located just meters away from the new camp stadium. No, evidently, because the great sabio that he had, this club, was Mr. Tort, who also passed away, and he knew a lot about football. He saw something special on me that others didn't see. He thought I had abilities that could be developed with time. When I was 14, 15, and 16 years old, they realized that I wasn't growing bigger and that all my teammates were already tall and big. At a time, there were some people that fought for me and that didn't want me to leave. He was one of them. They told me to be patient. They also made me some tests to see how much more I was going to grow, and they were right. They were the ones that were patient enough to wait. But at the beginning, I know that they saw some skills that I had and that they weren't related to my physics. Initially, leaving everything behind and going off to school was difficult for Pep and his family. But they all knew it was the right thing to do. As it turned out, Pep made some of his most important friendships during this period of his life. And it was here that he would continue to develop his time management and leadership skills, due in large part to the example set for him by one of his idols, Guillermo Amor. He likes me. He likes me because we get along well, and I don't think this is just because I have helped him, but because we live together. We went through tough times, difficult ones, and we were together and helping each other. We have been together during bad and good times, but I cannot say that he has needed me a lot because he's very strong and he always knew how to come out well. He has been able to do it because he's intelligent. He's got character and a strong personality, and because when it's time to stand out for a reason, he defends his beliefs. Pep would follow the lead of Amor in his efforts to become more rounded as a person and more professional as a footballer. 
There's little doubt that Guardiola's self-discipline off the pitch contributed to his on-field success. This determination was an inspiration to his teammates, who were beginning to respect Pep more and more as a colleague and a friend. I saw him playing when he was 13 years old, and I knew that he had a great touch. He had everything. Everything he has now, he had it back then. The only problem is that people said that he didn't have the appropriate physique, but that was a matter of working hard, and he did it, thanks to his own effort. A lot of people thought the same way, that he was a virtuous guy. He wasn't only talented in football, because when Pep played either ping pong or basketball, he did it well. He's a complete athlete. Off the park, he was teased by his teammates who claimed he slept too much, but that could never be said when he was out on the field. Even as a teenager, he was focused and in total control of what was going on around him. He knew how to direct traffic from the midfield area. He could see clearly the tactical schemes that were presented to him by his coaches and made sure his teammates understood them as well. Football meant everything to him. He lived and died on the pitch. Pep felt blessed to be able to play the game he loved but had resigned himself to the fact that he would never play at the highest level. He was happy performing for the juniors at Barcelona. Even here, that you have the Barca's field so close, you never think that you can make it. There were a lot of kids that had the same dream, but they didn't know what was going to happen because it is very difficult. But for me, just the idea of being here of playing with Barcelona, who was my favorite club since I was a little kid, surrounded with good players, good coaches, practicing in great facilities. That was all I needed at that point. I just wanted to get to the juniors and then just wait to see what was going to happen. But then something happened that would change Pep's outlook on the game and make him ache to be part of it at the Division One level. Pep was a ball boy for Barca in 1986, when the club beat Gothenburg from Sweden to reach the final of the European Cup. When Barcelona emerged victorious, Pep ran onto the pitch to hug his idols and experienced the same jubilation the players did. Pep knew this was a feeling he wanted to have again, and from that point on, he had fresh motivation. He began to train even harder, and soon the coaches took notice. When I went on to the first team, I told Johan Cruyff that I had a player with the skills that we were looking for. The problem was that Cruyff thought that he was playing in the second level team and he was actually playing in the second level junior team. This really shocked Johan. Barcelona coach Johan Cruyff decided to give Pep a chance to play with the first division team against Cadiz. And with the number four on his back, Guardiola came jogging out into the Nou Camp Stadium as though he had done it a hundred times before. He had everything under control. He knew he was a key player in all the teams he played. Since he was at the nursery teams, he knew he was important. So that didn't come as a shock for him. I felt a lot of responsibility. You start sweating everywhere. It is more than the happy feeling you have. For me, it was something that I could say later. I play at Barcelona. I have made my debut with Barca. The only goal I had during the match was to win. I didn't want the team to lose because they were the leaders at the moment. They were winning everything. So the responsibility came because I knew that if we lost, everybody was going to blame it on me because I was the rookie. I just didn't want to lose and I wanted to help the team. Everybody was saying that he was going to make his debut. The newspapers were betting on it. But you never realize it until you start listening to people that know about football. When they start calling your brother's name, it's right then that you realize that he's really going to debut and you get goosebumps and your heart starts beating a little faster.
Guardiola's debut was a resounding success. Barca won easily, and Pep had played well. Cruyff wanted Guardiola to continue developing his game, so he fielded him with the reserves in order to ensure he got more experience. He further encouraged Guardiola to develop his one-touch skills, as that was what Cruyff thought separated him from other players. Soon, Guardiola would return to the first team for good. And although he spent much of his time on the bench, he was a part of the squad that won the Spanish League Championship in season 1990-91. As Pep became more and more popular with the fans, so his celebrity began to grow. And by the time Barca won another league championship in 1992 and went on to capture the European Cup for the first time in club history, Pep had become more of a regular. His play with Barca led to a call-up for the 1992 Olympic team. Things had begun to take off for this young superstar in the making. During the 1992 Olympic Games in Barcelona, we walked together at the opening ceremony and enjoyed it together. I really was shocked when I saw him enjoying himself because he's a person that is used to playing in front of 110,000 people at Wembley and everywhere. There he showed his humility. He was excited for being an Olympic athlete. We lived that marvelous experience together and from then on we started a good friendship and I got to know the real Pep, not the athlete, but the man. The Spanish Olympic squad went to Valencia to play the first round matches. After qualifying for the final, the Spanish beat Poland 3-2 in the gold medal match, securing victory for the home side. 1992 was certainly a banner year for the young Guardiola. A Spanish league title followed by a European Cup and an Olympic gold. Not many players in the history of sports can claim that sort of success. And it all came so quickly, Pep was barely able to enjoy it. distinta porque it is different because all of a sudden you are playing with the first team and everybody knows you, but you are not conscious of what is really happening and what you have achieved. Right now, I value much more the Olympic gold medal that, that we won. The European Cup was more important for me than the Olympics at that moment, and it all came so fast. I had just won the European Cup when we had to play the Olympics. But right now, I will pay anything to play in another Olympics. I know that the time has gone, but even if I didn't win it again, I would love to live the experience one more time. Later that year, Pep would receive what would be his greatest personal honor to this point in his life. He was the recipient of the Bravo Award, which was given to the best European player under the age of 23. Having already been recognized as one of the best footballers in the world, Guardiola was beginning to become the symbol of Barcelona and the strength of the Premier Club in Spain and arguably all of Europe. Three more league championships in the ensuing years would cement that reputation. And it was a team that had undoubtedly taken on Pep's character. But somehow he remains unwilling to take responsibility for Barca's success. Only when I have the ball is when I feel powerful. But the truth is that we have to play the way the team needs us to play. And that is what I do as a captain. This unassuming personality has served Guardiola well over the years. He's comfortable with his position as team captain and handles all of the responsibilities with ease. In 1997, Guardiola suffered what was thought to be a career-ending injury, and it might have been just that for many other players. It took an emotional toll on Pep that many may not have come back from. But again, his character and drive helped him fight through the injury out of a sense of obligation to himself, his teammates, and the Barca fans. Pep had to accept the fact that the rest of the campaign he would spend watching from the sidelines. He knew he couldn't rejoin Barca that season, so he set his sights on the World Cup in France in 1998. He began a rigorous rehabilitation program just outside Paris. And apart from his family and a few friends, including Javier Clemente, more or less kept to himself. I couldn't help him much, but I just tried to sympathize with him and tried to make him know that he was very important for the team. 
But I was more worried about Pep Guardiola as a person than as a footballer. I knew he wasn't going through a good moment, that he was very injured and that the doctors didn't have a clue. That is what really worried me. Pep recovered fully from injury, and although the World Cup was a disappointment for Spain, Guardiola was very thankful that he could resume his career without missing a beat. Pep soon rejoined Barcelona, and under the direction of Louis van Gaal, Barca won yet another Spanish League championship, ensuring the team's place as one of the most dominant sides in La Liga history. And van Gaal isn't shy in identifying Guardiola as one of the main reasons for the club's success. Pep Guardiola is a cerebro. Pep Guardiola is very intelligent on and off the court. He can also see the situation before it happens, and he passes very well, and all this is very important. After Van Gaal's departure in the summer of 2000, it became apparent that Guardiola would begin the new millennium with a new coach. When Lorenzo Serra Ferrer was named to manage Barcelona, he too was excited about the prospect of coaching a player of Guardiola's quality. It is very fortunate to be able to have a player like him and also to be able to have a complete athlete. Pep is emotionally a very balanced guy and he's always motivating the group. He's a player that is very useful in the team because he's always very calm and very balanced. Pep Guardiola is by no means finished. There's still a great deal he wishes to accomplish. A victory for Spain in the World Cup in Korea and Japan in 2002 would be the feather on the cap of one of the most distinguished careers in the history of Spanish football. And that's what Pep's aiming for. But whether he achieves this goal or not won't affect what his friends, teammates, coaches and fans think of him. He has already made an indelible impression on the football world, and he means so many things to so many people. Yes, undoubtedly, Pep Guardiola's place in the annals of football is secure, as it is in the hearts of his friends and fans worldwide. <laughs>